This is Twit. You were on Twit episode zero, Twit episode one, and I don't know, maybe the first hundred Twits. It's great to see you, it's good Kevin. To, good to see you, Leo. Thanks for having me. Uh, venture capitalist with True Ventures. He's got a brand new podcast. I want to give you a plug right up front. MoFi, the Modern Finance Podcast. You're only in your, uh, you've only done three episodes, only two published so far, but the first one is a must listen. I listen to it immediately uh, because I am completely baffled by this whole crazy NFT thing. We've spent a lot of time talking about the Beeple's $69 million <laughs> art s JPEG sold at Christie's. Uh, but you explained it all very well uh, with uh, I am DC investor uh, Aftab Hossein, uh, who is who is, you know, and you. I guess you're also an investor. You've bought some NFTs. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely dabbling way back when CryptoPunks first came out, which was uh, probably well, that was before the the standard was actually defined. So two they and a half, three years ago, they weren't actually NFTs at first, were they? That's right. Yeah, the the standard was based on the work done with the Crypto Punks uh, project. Oh, interesting. So they were. So you're smart. I, I heard you say that you sold. <laughs> this is these are the Crypto Punks. Yeah, just they are twenty five by twenty five pixels. Yeah, they're icons <laughs> of zombies, right? Uh, yeah, the, oh, another the, thing. The zombie is one at attribute type. Yes. And uh, aliens, zombies, and yeah, they all have different mohawks and glasses and beard types. And I mean, but you uh, buy, but you buy these, which I, which I don't understand because I see them all right here. I have them all. You you buy them so that if I if I click on the smiling zombie, which apparently you own, um, I can look at it. I could print it. I could do anything sure. I want with it. But you own it. That's right. Yeah, you could do the same thing with the get a high res uh, copy of the Mona Lisa and print it out and That's hang it true. Up in your house, but but you don't have it. That's true. So it's like you yeah, got so the Mona Lisa of, of, of smiling zombies. Is that it? Yeah, I mean it's basically just a, a way to use the blockchain to prove that someone actually has ownership over something. So that it's makes all the a lot of sense. In ownership that by makes a lot cementing of sense. it in the blockchain. That's a real problem with artworks, with baseball cards, with any collectible is attribution and and uh, who owns it, but also is it real? Is it a, a and so blockchain yeah, kind of solves that. And the third piece that's really important is how many were made. I mean, right. one of the things that that happened in the the '90s around baseball cards and collectibles and comic books is. Um, you know, there's a there's a great story. We all, of course, know the the very famous franchise of the Wolverine, and the very first Wolverine comic is still $150. And I I dug into this. I'm like, how this was made in the 80s? How can this possibly be? And it turns out they printed like something like 300,000 of them, and didn't tell anyone. <laughs> they just sold as many as they could. And which makes sense as a business, but as a collectors, you didn't know that, you know. And so the blockchain gives you a way to say proven scarcity, proven right. ownership. Um, so that's that's nice. So there is another way, uh, a biological way to to barcode and to track authenticity, and that's DNA. So you can spray uh, custom DNA on just about anything. It's odorless. It's colorless. It leaves no residue. It leaves no mark. Um, and then you have physical, so blockchain is great, but you know, it's there, not physical, a physical way. In fact, yeah, I mean, you can, the, yeah. the, the, the crypto punk is not in the blockchain, right? The image itself is not in the blockchain, Kevin, just the URL. Well, right. That's not true because the, with crypto punks, it was only a 25 by 25. Oh, they're so, so they small. You could put a hash <laughs> of the, okay. yeah, exactly. You I believe, you're in. right. In any modern, like the beeples, all that stuff, it is just a pointer to like an IPFS type. Uh, you know, asset. Right. Well, at least it's like, and there are problems. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think all of that works well as, as long as you have a ton of redundancy built in, but yeah. Cause if it's just, one of the cool if it things, were a web URL, it could, you know, it, the server could go down at least with IPFS, it's a distributed file system. And yeah. so in theory, or, it's gonna, not going to go away. You could spray DNA fragments. So um, I'm not going to ask you, <laughs> It's probably, it's not tr the traditional method of spraying DNA, I'm assuming. It's some other high, no, Leo, high tech that's method. not what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, that's where my mind went. Uh, it's a sneeze, right? You sneeze on it. Sure. I'm sure, if you think about it, that uh, probably a few Van Goghs have his DNA on them. But you're probably. not talking about that. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm, I am... Um, you know, one of the really cool things that's happened, uh, one of the positive after effects of the virus is that messenger RNA, which has been around forever, just, it finally found a use case, a business case. 
Um, to, so to make the vaccines with, in this case. That's right. And mRNA is, is a pretty cool technology um, that has some knock-on of effects. And one of which is looking at um, RNA and DNA in, in sort of a new light. So you can, DNA is like nature's hard drive. You can store a ton of stuff uh, in it um, and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and, and likewise, you can use DNA as a tracking system. So if you've got a really valuable collection of comic books, not Wolverine, um, but something else more <laughs> valuable, you know, one way to physically mark products like that artifacts um, that you can authenticate in the future is, is using DNA fragments. One of the advantages of blockchain in this regard is it's distributed and uh, everybody has a copy. There's no... Uh, with mm -hmm. DNA... You'd still have to have some registry somewhere of what the what's 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 in that RNA. If I mean, it doesn't have to be RNA. It could be any yeah. encoding method for encoding a long digit. String, right. I mean, it's right? like a you can encode spores too. It's just it's like a barcode. Um, but yeah. yes, you would still need or you would still need a registry that should be distributed. Um, that that works great for like individual objects, but if you're going to do something like say fractional ownership of a digital yeah. object, oh, you that, can't that would, do that. Wouldn't be yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, you, you know, smart contracts enable things like artworks to change over time based on rule sets, like, like really kind of mm -hmm. fun things like that as well are, are, are pretty cool with some of the NFT stuff. I think people, and I include myself in this, get distracted by trying to wrap their mind around, well, people made a JPEG, which is infinitely reproducible and then was able to sell it for $69.3 million dollars. Uh, to somebody who now can claim ownership in some abstract way. And we get wrapped around this notion of collectibles, physical versus virtual objects and all of that. And, you know, you can go either way on that. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm kind of of the opinion it's pretty speculative. and But so is so are collectibles. I mean, you don't buy a, a right. Hannes Wagner baseball card because it has any intrinsic value. Uh, you buy it because you think either you're really a big fan of the Pittsburgh Pirates or you think it's going to have more value in a, down the road and you can sell it. It's a way of, of storing value. Just like, unfortunately, a lot of artworks now are ways of storing value. They're not hung on any wall. They're stored in a, a locker at some airport to avoid customs and uh, taxes. Uh, but they're a store of value and you know you'll be able to sell them at some point, probably for more than you paid for it. Right. So... I acknowledge that this is a good way to, this is a better, blockchain is a better way to store value. But I think people like me get all <laughs> tied in a knot over this. Well, you, what are you kids doing? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is silly. There's also, and let me ask you about this, Kevin, because you didn't address this in uh, modern finance. There's also an environmental concern, isn't there? I mean, there's a lot of energy cr being used to create these things. And every transaction yeah. uses a lot of energy. I think I, the energy consumption of, of proof of work blockchain has been known for for quite some time. I mean, there's there's it's horrible, and so I mean that's why there's a lot of work and effort going into making these chains just eco friendly. I mean, if you take a look at all of the layer two scaling solutions for Ethereum, everything is they're doing with optimistic rollups. These are like very um, lightweight ways to do. Uh, cryptographically proven transfers without having to write it back to the main chain, so without spending a lot of resource power, until we get to something that is um, proof of stake, which is not proof of work, which is not using very intensive CPU or GPUs to do all these transaction processing, which is on the Ethereum roadmap. I mean, this stuff is coming. It's been on it's the roadmap for a long time, though. Kevin. Yeah, I, I know, <laughs> but you're also talking about you know uh, how many billions of dollars. Of, you got to be very careful when you're when you're uh, changing directions of a, a plane of that size, right? Like you, if you're, if you're setting a new destination, like you don't want, you want to really battle and harden the code. And so, you know, there's been some ETH too is like, there's, they've crossed a couple of major milestones and staking is the next big one. Um, so and that will I'm eliminate the, uh, the grotesque energy expenditure. Yes. Of, yeah. And, and, and there's already other chains out there that like are getting a lot of traction that are already green from the get go. Chia, Bram Cohen, the creator of BitTorrent just launched his coin, um, here just, uh, four or five days ago. You actually uh, interview him for the very efficient green for the What's podcast. That? You just interviewed him for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a very efficient, super green cryptocurrency. Um, it's going to have support for um, smart contracts and other things on top of it. Uh, Solana, super, like talk about 
um, uh, high bandwidth, high throughput, they can do 50,000 transactions a second and it is super efficient and green. Um, so, you know, these, these are all problems that are being worked out, but I, I certainly acknowledge that today it sucks. And of course, like, um, dependent upon where you're getting your energy from, like there are a lot yeah. of miners that will go next to very cheap, uh, sources, sure. which can be hydroelectric. They can be, you know, solar and be they're, they're mining sure. in those environments. Sure. Sure. In fact, it only makes sense to, to mine where electricity is cheap because otherwise you're probably not making a profit. Right. <laughs> uh, it kind of brings up the issue of, uh, I saw some wag tweet, uh, Elon Musk said Tesla now will accept Bitcoin to purchase a, a Tesla automobile. And uh, of course, some wag pointed out that you, well, you might as well just put gas engines in them, Elon, because <laughs> you're not, if you're all the benefit, the environmental benefit of an electric vehicle is kind of abrogated by using Bitcoin to pay for them. Um, I mean, yes and no. I think that there's a couple things here. Like, what are the payment rails behind the scenes? If you're going, let's say, uh, I don't know what they're using for for on the on the merchant side to accept Bitcoin, but let's just say it's it's Coinbase, right? Yeah. Um, if you're going Coinbase to Coinbase, you're not doing anything. There's no you're conversion. You're actually writing yeah. to the chain, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's just staying within that that family. So mm, it depends. And, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, somebody pointed out uh, that. You know, there's there's not inconsiderable energy usage in banking as well. I mean, you know, uh, we use a lot of energy for a lot of things, including Google searches, and we don't pay much attention to that. And that we got to pay attention to it all soon. Yeah, yeah, because it's not it's not sustainable in the long run.